Blimey, that was a little bit upbeat, wasn't it? Christ, is that is that a new one? Is that a new one? Oh, oh. oh keep it down. Keep it down. Who put that together? Who put yeah. that together? I don't know. I think that was Nick. I don't know. He's, he's, he's testing us out. We're guinea pigs. We're guinea pigs. Anyway, welcome everybody to uh, to the Sunday Night Booze up here on Clarent Booze, where I won't be doing any boozing but Johnny's. Um, I've done enough boozing over this weekend. I'm just freshly back from Dublin from a stag weekend, so I'm, I'm not feeling, it has to be said, I'm not feeling my best, John. I'm not feeling my best. Mate, I don't I'll blame you, up. mate. You got, get, get, going on stag dudes at 47 years of age or whatever you are, I mean, come on. 47, thank you, John. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I know you're older now. I'm trying to be calm. <laughs> trying to be calm. Should we, um, should we, should we address the elephant in the room and and, and it, know Nick? The elephant in the room. Yeah, yeah. He's he's decided. Nick is Nick will not be joining us tonight. Good reason for that is um his son turned fourteen, and there's nothing you can do about birthdays. They just happen. No. And so they're out for a they're out for a family meal. Neil Nick's getting a a well deserved night off. I think he's done yeah. every every show for the last god knows how many weeks, and he like you. Yeah, I think he yeah I think he'll outdo the number of shows tonight with a number of Papa Doms elite though, won't he? He probably will. Yeah, he yeah, loves yeah, a Papa yeah. Dom. He loves he, a Papa Dom. He, he does. Enfield Tandoor, he'd be doing a lot of business in Papa Doms tonight. A lot of trade. <laughs> 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 indeed, indeed. But we might be we might be joined by Danny Martinez, who's our US counterpart. Uh, he might be coming on. He's just running a little bit late. Um, but you know, we, as usual, we've got some great people in the chat. And Chris Harris has just decided to jump out the bath uh, just so we don't feel like you know, don't feel used. Hopefully, you've got dressed, Chris, because uh, you know we don't want to be thinking about yeah, you in the it's in the, not, in the not a pleasant thought, is it? It's not a pleasant thought. It's not a pleasant yeah. thought. Um, but yeah, so what we'll are we talking about today, Gal? Right, we've got um, a load of stuff on the agenda, actually. See how quickly we can move through it. There will be no phoning, obviously, because Nick has that technology in his loft, and we ain't got it. We've got no access yeah. to it. So no. we're going to do more in the chat tonight, going to interact with the chat a lot more. Um, firstly, briefly, we'll touch on the England, uh, the England game just now. Won't spend long on that. There wasn't much to talk about. And then we'll talk about the uh, the other elephant in the room, and that is Mark Noble. Um and I think Nick put it nicely. He created the um, the thumbnail tonight, and he said it's jobs for the boys. You know, giving 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 jobs to their mates. And I, and I think it, it, I want to ask a question. Now, is he is he fit for purpose as a sporting director? I mean, in the strictest sense of the word. So that might upset yeah, you a bit, John. Yeah, he probably will, but we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, just just so we know, a slander's already started. Uh, slow fire radio. Hi guys, I just paid fifty grand for a pretend Harvard degree, and now I run the company. <laughs> so uh, we can Mate. tell how this is going to go. And you know, I'm Mark Noble's biggest fan, so you know, it might be a little bit of animosity coming yeah. my way. But there you was go. was that? Yeah, but was that a five day degree like Mark like Mark Noble's? Yeah, Must well, exactly that, exactly, right. that, exactly that, exactly right. that, exactly that, exactly that. So um, the rest of the agenda, so Mark, no, well, that's going to be a touchy one, and then we'll move mm. on to, uh, there's there's a, a lawsuit. Apparently the stadium's going to cost the taxpayer a billion quid, and there's an ongoing lawsuit, so we're going to touch on that. And then there was a, a an Opta report published earlier in the week. Amherst Chat did a, did a great thing on it. We're not going to do an in-depth analysis like them, but it's just, just want to get to, want to talk about what it means, because it kind of means that our eyes have not been deceiving us. We have been a bit crap, even statistically. <laughs> and then and then finally, let's uh, talk about who is our best striker. Because again, we've been argue, arguing about that in WhatsApp this yeah. week. And yeah. uh, I know I know what I think. And uh, yeah, we'll see yeah, what everyone right. else thinks as well. So uh, Danny has just arrived. He's entered the building. So let me bring Danny in. Looks like he's making drinks. Is he making oh, drinks? No, that's Mercedes. Hi, guys. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you doing? Danny, first you're here, then you're not. I thought, Danny, I thought Danny had a good figure all of a sudden, but it was Mercedes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah clean up nicely, don't I? Yeah. How you doing, Danny? I'm doing well. It's great to see you guys again. You guys all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been ages, time, isn't it? Long time no see. What have you been up to? Uh, same old, same old, man. Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, well, we're getting into spring here. It's a lot, well, it's supposed to be a lot warmer, but it's not. But Yeah. No. Uh, I'm, I'm back warm, out to it's New York. not warm here either, don't worry. I, I'm, I'm back out to New York in the morning, so um, oh, or tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, so yeah, I know, I know. I'm, I'm back on Friday though, so it's only a brief, only a brief trip this time. But oh, it's, well, it's still quite first world problems, Gal. Yeah, first world. Yeah, problems. I know, I know, I know. It's <laughs> quite, it's, it's quite chilly in New York, John. So, so perhaps maybe as maybe a small jumper might be might be in order. You know, a little. I suppose, I suppose, flying first class, business class will help cover. Oh, you if only you knew the harsh reality. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Danny, I hope you caught the agenda just now. We've got a lot to talk about. We've got a lot to talk about. Let's start off with uh, with England in what was, um, to my mind, quite an underwhelming game of football against Ukraine just now. But a win's yeah. a win. A win's a win. And do you watch it, John? Yeah, it was pretty dull, wasn't it? I, I was. Um, it's funny that um, we knew that Ukraine was probably going to offer up a lot of the ball to us. Um, but we just didn't look as cutthroat as we did against Italy. I thought against Italy in the first half, we were brilliant. Um, but today, it just seemed a bit more tepid. It was almost like after the Lord Mayor's show a little bit, wasn't it? It was a bit like, you know, yeah, bit run of the yeah. mill, bit run of the mill. Um, I mean, look, <laughs> this is, I mean, football fans are great. Look, I love Eastside, but look, I still think Harry Kane is overrated. Never turns up for the big game. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, East side, but I am disagreeing with you. I mean, look, I know he's a Tottenham player, but you can't take away his record. No, no. It was a great finish, and Saka uh, made... It was a quality cross from Saka, yeah. wasn't it? I mean, Saka's yeah. looking like he could be very, very good for England. Um, yeah. more, Much more of an outlet than uh, than Sterling ever was, on oh, the, to my mind. Oh, 100%. 100%. I think, I think, obviously, Saka's... Um, you know, you're seeing the fact that he's being taught, uh, being coached by Arteta... And obviously, as well, Arsenal are on such a run. He's yeah. playing well for club and country, you know. A bit like Declan Rice, really, because, I mean, Gareth obviously loves Declan Rice, doesn't he, you know? Yeah, and, he, and to be fair, Declan Rice, um, the other day, he paid back Graham Souness with interest, didn't he, about his kind. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. he, he he scored a goal, and he was probably the best player on the pitch against Italy. Yeah. He was magnificent. Yeah. Um, and Italy away was kind of the main course, and today was like a bit of a disappointing dessert, wasn't it? Yeah, but yeah. you know, sometimes you go for the dessert you like, and it's ample, you know. So, yeah. yeah. So, what do you reckon, Danny? Did you catch England? I did not. I I have not kept up with the international break. Actually, oh, I, oh. I've seen the results, and I and I did see the highlights, uh, but not, I've not I've not sat and watched the games though. Danny, yeah. the least we expected when you invited you on as a guest tonight was you would do your your research. I mean, was that I did not. Everything was happening like I a game of football that happened not two hours ago, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, two games, two wins, can't complain. Yeah. I think England are going to just, you know, coast into another tournament, um, into another finals, which is good. It's just whether we can uh, do something when we get there. Let's hope we can. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, um, so, so look, let's let's move on to the uh, before before we go there. Before we change the subject, let's let's keep an eye on the comments tonight. Anything anything in the comments about England? Well, yeah, I mean, John is quite rightly um, adamant and, and quite pissed off that Danny is calling himself an England fan, but he oh, didn't absolutely want to not. <laughs> okay, let me, let me I, I cheer for England, but I'm not, I don't, I don't catch every game. You guys always joke in this joke. It's a joke. Hang on, what's going on? Craven Moorhead has agreed with Eastside and, and added to the fact that Harry Kane's not world class by saying that Declan is not world class. I mean, well, I don't think I don't think Declan is world class at the moment because I will what? take that. No, no, no. Look, look, hear me out. Hear me out. What what oh. Graham Souness said, even though it was disappointing for Declan to hear, mm. he, he was just repeating as well something that Roy Keane said, and that is a world class central midfielder does yeah. three things: they defend, they create, yeah. and they score yeah. goals. Right yeah. now, mm. when he's doing all three of those on a regular basis, I think he could be considered world class. Yes, at the moment, he's a world class central defensive midfielder who's good at doing that one role of shielding the defence and giving the ball to someone that can play, yeah? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't disagree, but his role at West Ham is not to be on the front foot, is it? His role at West Ham is not to go forward and score goals. That's not yeah. the role given to him by Moore. So he's he's pretty much hampered by, I suppose he's, he's hampered. He's shackled by, a bit, isn't he? He's shackled a little bit because he's so important blocking and and and... and you know, in front of the back four and that, that Moyes isn't going to allow him to push forward and, and, and get goals. You've, we, we've, we've heard for, for years now that in training, he's got fantastic, you know, he can show, he can do all this stuff. Yeah. But when it comes to matches, he doesn't. But how often does he get the opportunity? Yeah. Really? I think, you know, he's no, not no, up no, there, is he? No. no, and he is, I think he's doing, what he's doing now is for the, for the greater good of the team, you know, doing the defensive side. Trudge had a yeah. good comment yeah. there. He said Kane goes missing too often for his liking. I think he goes missing from a vertical position too often. Find himself, you know, he loves he loves to fall on the ball and uh, and go down. I think he did. was that a dive for a penalty or was it or was it actually a penalty? It was a shirt tug, wasn't it, early in the game tonight? Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, it probably wasn't. Yeah. Good. So, Danny, what, what do you reckon, I, I, Declan Rice, world class or not world class? He's got the potential to be world class. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, let's let's be honest. Is it, it if he was in a a stronger squad that maybe played more to his strengths? Yes, but we could play that what if game all day and night. But uh, right now, is he? No, but it's not necessarily uh, his fault. Mm. No, no, I agree. I agree. So look, let's I mean, Lee, move it on. Lee, to... Lee, you know, just quickly, Lee, Lee sort of hits the nail on the head here. I don't think Deck or anybody can score goals when you're babysitting our defence. And that's not, it's not the defence's fault because we're quite good defensively, really, in terms of our goal difference and that. Scoring goals is our problem, but it's obviously the style of play, isn't it? You know, so. Yeah, and I think the way we the way we play just leads to even more defending, isn't it? It, it kind of, need, it, it necessitates uh, us having more people in defensive positions. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. We, we invite people on. We invite people on. Yeah, but yeah. Definitely. So yeah, look, Mark Mark Noble, the next topic, right? Mark Noble. Is he fit for purpose as a sporting director? Is this jobs for the boys? Is this I mean, when I first heard that Mark Noble had been given this job, I thought it was at a time when we weren't doing very well. And I thought this was uh, the club trying to release some bad news to cheer people some good news to cheer people up a bit in amongst all the all the bad news. And I and I think, you know, what what appears to have happened here is that he seems to be working under the direction of David Moyes, what we see from the outside in. It looks like, you know, David Moyes probably had a hand in 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 getting him the job in the first place. Now, that to me is not the job of a sporting director. The sporting director sits between the board and the manager. So what is he, what is he, an apprentice sporting director? Is he just, you know, is, is this the same situation as, you know, remember Pellegrini hired his own sporting director? Yeah. Yeah, is um, is this the same thing again? Do, do we not understand? Do we not comprehend what a traditional sporting director, in the true sense of the, uh, of the term, I mean, he's it, it, not actually a, a director for a start, is he? He's not on the board. It's it's a it's no. a job title. I think I think I think people are twisting it in so much as nobody has said that he's got the experience necessary. Nobody has said that he's overly qualified for the role in terms of experience of doing the job anywhere else, okay? But you're right. We don't really know what his role entails. However, what you cannot take away from it, that going forward, if you look at his career at the club and if you look at his potential of being in this role for years going forward, he's going to far, he's going to be there far longer than Moyes, right? He, Noble will have, I'd imagine Noble will have a far better relationship with Sullivan because he's been there as long as Sullivan's been there, right? So he knows Sullivan inside out. They probably know each other very well, obviously. Um, and I think that he's been brought in, not for the here and now so much, but 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 more so for going forward and after the, 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 the end of Moyes' time at West Ham. You've you got to think about the bigger picture. He's not, he's not there now. I mean, I've seen videos and listened to opinions. He's not there now to go out and make transfers. He's not there now to go out and sign contracts and get people's wages negotiated and all this stuff. He's not. As much as his role may tell you it is, he isn't. What is he there for now then? Because at the moment we seem to be getting multiple reports. I mean, these are coming through players. Um, one of them was was Soufal in a in an interview, and another one was via a Jacob Steinberg article for a, a player unknown. Um, and basically saying the play that you know the, it's a divided camp. The players hate the tactics. You know, original players want to play one way. New players want to play another way. Now, now, surely that, I mean, there should be one or two things happening here as a sporting director. He should be getting involved in trying to calm the situation because he knows the players, he knows the manager, and trying to get an outcome that's good for everybody unless he's sticking to uh, the players that, that he, he played with last year and the year before because he's got loyalty to them or whatever, right? So yeah, you know, either that. So he's so so he should be involved in 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 smoothing the situation out, unless that ain't his role. Unless that is, uh, I I think I think Nobles. Uh, look, I know it's not. Um, we'll never know the role, right? Until we see his job description. Yeah, I think his main role is like a go 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 to man. He's the go between. He's the go to man for players. He's he's taking. Um, he's taken a more um, he's taken a more hands-on role with the academy, looking at the under 18s as the next generation to try and bring through into the first team squad. And all this stuff that he's doing, i.e., with the with the academy under 18s, is going to be stuff that's going to be when Moyes is gone. 
So it's what I'm trying to say is we're looking at it as a here and now. It's not Gal. He's not. What is his role? I don't know. They had to give him a title. Whether it's the right title or not, I don't know. But there's no one I would trust more with doing what's right for West Ham as a club than Mark Noble. Because well, he's a West Ham boy. I, I think it's easy, it's, that's, it's easy to say that because he is a West Ham boy and he showed you know great loyalty to us for staying for so many years, albeit there wasn't really anybody interested in buying him, let's be brutally honest. Uh, about oh, it, so he, God. so he showed no, he showed a lot of loyalty. He showed a lot of loyalty, but it was off the back of it. Look, he wasn't a well beater, was he? I mean, he he played a he he done very well for us and had a healthy career, right? But mm-hmm. you can't you couldn't say at any point. I mean, he had certain games where he's outstanding, like that Tottenham away game where we won an outstanding. There were certain times where he had a, a great running team that that um you know. Uh, where he had a great season, like 2015, 16, you know, last season at Upton Park, he was outstanding. But you can't say it was a, a, a career. Should have broken into the England squad that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. should have. Well, well, how do you see this, Danny? How do you see this? Uh, I, I understand why a lot of people would be worried that um, that Noble's appointment appointment uh, appears to be more ceremonious than anything, right? Yeah. Um, I I just can't imagine that that's how he would go about approaching that role, even if. It, even if the the role itself might be vague to to all of us, it's at least the the he's got that title. I, I just can't imagine that he wouldn't approach that the the way that he approached this playing career, which was uh, you know one hundred and ten percent, yeah, no matter what. So uh, I, I don't know. It's it, it, it's hard to say. Yeah, I think uh, what you I think what you got to remember is we we've, we've we've been told, and there's been lots of articles t- telling us. Um, and, and and recent player interviews that Moyes doesn't talk to the players. He doesn't have much interaction with his players. So, you know, maybe Sullivan thought that Noble was the perfect person to bring in to be the go-between between the players and the manager and the players and the board. And, you know, it's he's only been in the job two months. Remember that. He's only been there two months officially appointed in the role, right? Moyes is- and, and, and I know he's not particularly qualified, Right, I know he hasn't got the uh, the necessary skills uh, it, on black and white in paper. He hasn't got the credentials. Sure. Hey, that Harvard, that Harvard degree's got to count for something. It's, <laughs> I think it's everybody, a Harvard bro. I think everybody's <laughs> misinterpreting it, though. I think everybody's misinterpreting it. I think that uh, U.S. I, I just presidents think, I think no, Harvard, Noble, no, Noble, what's that? I said U.S. presidents have gone to Harvard. That's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, I just think, look, so people people in the chat are saying, people in the chat are coming out with things saying it was an appointment to appease the fans, right? Yeah. But, it, but, but listen, West Ham fans ain't idiots. West Ham fans ain't going, oh, what a brilliant appointment. I'm not saying what a brilliant appointment. We've never had this role at the club before, to my knowledge, right? So this is brand new for the club. So why not bring someone in who maybe isn't qualified, but in, in five, six, seven years' time, after he's had more involvement in it, he will be the perfect person. He knows the club inside out. He bleeds claret and blue. I know you say that doesn't matter, but it does. He knows the DNA of the club. It's easy to say that, and it's easy to assume that he's going to be a storming success and he's going to be fantastic and he's going to be a great leader because, what he, you know, it was a kind of leadership position he had on the pitch, to be fair. So, you know, but then again, you know, you can say the same about uh, uh, Billy Bonds, who, who, who was a great manager for us in the championship but not so good in, in the top flight. So, you know, just because you were a great leader on the pitch doesn't necessarily follow that you'd be either a great manager or a great leader in business. And this is in, in business, in the business of football, isn't it? I, um, I, I'm not... I'm not so sure. I think he's got he's got a lot to prove. I don't think he'll be there if there an if there's a new ownership comes in. Um, I'm not so sure Noble will still be will still feature under a new owner. Yeah, but, but as things stand, you believe that his tenure in this current role will outlive the tenure of David well, Moyes. Well, I just think that I think John's right in in a way is that it, it is one for the future under this regime. But I think at the yeah. moment it is um, it really should have been just done on the quiet rather than giving it uh, the the fanfare that it received, right? Because the, hey, look at the approach. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's not a full it's not a full sporting director role. You know, he's come in, probably partly been hired by David Moyes. David Moyes at the moment is saying things like, you know, quite disparaging actually, um, saying, Oh yeah, we invite him into some meetings to talk about uh player recruitment and stuff like that. So David Moyes is calling the shots on the sporting director. It's like he works for David Moyes. And that is a little bit odd, right? So the only one he seems to have quite a lot to do with the under eighteens. Yeah. Right. But I, but as far as being the the go between between the the players, you know, understanding the players, you know, what what would he do, for instance, if the players are, the players seem to be going to Jacob Steinberg and and talking to other media outlets about how unhappy they are at the moment? They ain't going to Mark Noble yeah, because people, more than likely yeah, Mark yeah. Noble's loyal to David Moyes. He ain't going to go to David Sullivan and say fucking oh it's chaos down there. The players are spitting feathers, you know. But who do you think? Who do you think Mark Noble's more loyal to, the club or David Moyes? Um, well, I think he he would be he would have some immediate loyalty do, to David Moyes if he helped him get the job. You, no, I disagree, mate. Because do you think do you think that somebody that really caused what like, do you think that somebody who in his mind quite rightly frog marched that fan off the pitch against Burnley when it had a massive effect on a lot of people's opinions of him? Other West Ham fans after he did that they were livid that he did such a thing. Do you think? That he would be scared of going to Sullivan and saying, "Look, this is not right." I don't think he would. I'm not I saying he'd be scared. He would. Listen, I'm not saying he'd be scared of doing it. I'm just saying that I I don't think he he would do it. I think he's still got loyalties to Moyes. Moyes has helped him get this job, and Moyes is kind of helping him, uh, obviously introducing him into meetings and stuff like that, trying to get get him the experience. I think he's he's not gonna, um, uh, to my mind, is he, you know Sullivan is all the only messages you're getting out of Sullivan at the moment are. David Moyes is brilliant. He's the guy we want to keep. And if we go down, we're going to keep David Moyes. That tells me yeah, but, yeah, that the messages yeah, but, coming Cal, from Art Noble yeah, are not. Yeah, but, Cal, a fucking nightmare scenario. Yeah, Gary, it Gary, fucking Gary, is, Gary, isn't Gary, it? Gary, yeah. Gary, Gary, if, if the rumours are getting out there that there's disharmony at the club, right? Yeah. What, what, what are all the people in positions of power going to do? They are going to quash or try to quash such rumours. They got. They are going to want to try and create harmony, even if they know there's no harmony there. They're going to. They're going to want to try and portray a picture of harmony at the club, even if there isn't harmony there. No one's going to come out and go, "Oh, it's all fucking shit." You know, Noble's not going to come out and go, Moyes needs to go. Even if he, somebody help us, <laughs> exactly. He, he can't come out publicly. I mean, the players are doing it. You know, ever so slightly, I, I agree. But but people who are in director roles, managerial roles in the background, they're not going to come out and say anything until Moyes has gone or they get sacked. That's when you hear the truth. I, yeah. I, I just don't understand what people are expecting. I mean, they're not going to come out and go, yeah, Moyes is going to be sacked no matter what he does. Noble's not going to come out and go, oh, yeah, it's terrible down there. You know, it's not looking good. I think... Noble's role, maybe, possibly, was to try and appease some of the disharmony amongst the fan base. Yeah. But it hasn't worked because, if anything, a lot of the fans seem to be sort of almost laughing in the face of Noble. And I think that's wrong. I'm sorry to say it. I think it's wrong because, because, no, because fans, Gal, a lot of West Ham fans are mugging off Noble, in my opinion, mate. And I'm not saying he deserves unenviable respect, but. He deserves a little bit more respect than being in the job for two months, and we're sort of laughing at him. That's how it feels to me. I, I don't think we're laughing at him. I think I think he maybe Noble has been sold a bit of a pup, right? Or alternatively, yeah, he is just keeping his head down for until David Moyes goes. Perhaps behind the scenes, it is inevitable that he's going, and all this is just you know surface fluff that's been that's been put out there. You know. Um, can he grow into the role? So, um, so, so, for, for instance, at the moment, you, you, you know, I've been in a situation once where I, where I was part of a team, the manager left, and I took over the team. So I was, I, I had to. It's very different. It's very different. It's not football, right? But it's a similar kind of situation. And I know for me, it took a while to get to grips with that. And I'm wondering whether, you know, firstly, has Noble actually been given? The tools, and you know, has he been empowered with the right to um, to impose himself on on the regime the way it is at the moment? And I think the answer to that is probably no, right? Mm. He's probably just just been just been asked to go in there and you know learn the ropes, sort of thing. And maybe you're right. The next time, the next manager that comes in, if it's under Sullivan, that is when he'll be empowered with the, you know, and he'll yeah. and he'll, and he'll, he'll take control of the situation. Maybe I think I think I think there's an element of truth to the fact that 
Moyes probably Moyes. I don't believe Moyes got him the job. I don't believe that. No, I don't, no, I don't no, believe no he needed ball. any help getting that job. Exactly. No, no Not ball for far, Moyes, at least. No, with all due respect to Moyes, Noble's far more uh, important to West Ham than Moyes will ever be. And I mean mm. that respectfully, right? In my yeah. mind, and hopefully most of the fans' mind. But probably, to some extent, Noble was the only one that Moyes would allow to take that role on. He wouldn't have wanted somebody with vast experience because that would have then in some way dented his power at the club. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it, it might be a case of Moyes was sort of accepting of Noble because he is a trainee, as, as, as he referred to him. But I'm thinking long term, you know, long after Moyes is gone. I think he'll be an asset. I really do believe that. Maybe it might yeah. be my fanboy thing of it. As people call me a fanboy of Noble, but I'm not. Well, I just you want him to succeed. You want him to do well in that role yeah, because he's he's a beloved figure of the club. Like why wouldn't you? Of course. And 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 obviously, as we know, in January, if the rumours are to be believed, when he resigned or was talking about resigning, that may have been from the case that he felt inadequate. That may have been from the fact that he thought, hang on a minute, what, what am I actually doing here? Yeah. Maybe he felt a little bit of a token gesture. But maybe I'm in over my head. I'm not prepared for this. I need to go to Harvard for a week. Yeah. Shut up, Danny. That, that was, wasn't that straight after we'd signed Danny Ings? What or was it when it when he when he threatened to leave? Apparently, or was that some some other trigger? No, it, was for that? it was like a couple of weeks into his thing, wasn't it? it was a couple yeah, of weeks yeah. In, but what was the trigger for it? Can you remember? I, I can't was remember exactly we, what it was. Maybe someone names. in the chat can remember. Danny, I can't remember. Can't remember. I don't remember. No, nah. I, I thought nah. it was before we signed Danny Ings, but I don't. I think know. it was before Ings. Yeah, yeah. I think no, it was before it. Ings. Yeah. All right. So, um, what what do the people in the chat think? Uh, there's a lot of. You know, anti Moyes and anti Noble. Moyes clearly didn't approve of Noble's appointment given his public reaction when it happened. That is true. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. he, yeah. He did put him down a little bit publicly. He did put him down, but Moyes is, you know, maybe a little bit. He's good at that, isn't he? Um, yeah. Where's this one? Uh, where's this one? Garino says, "I can imagine Sullivan offering the role to Noble by saying, we 'We'll call you sporting director of something, and you may go to some meetings in it.'" And if you don't like it, <laughs> tell you what, tell you what, come in, Mark. We give you get you involved in some meetings. <laughs> yeah, good, Mark. Oh, look at Nick. He has to get involved. Look, me, me, me. I'm still here. Yeah. Nick says, just dipping in on the way back from the restaurant. How can Noble be compromised in his role when he will feel loyalty to Moyes that could muddy his decision making? He should be Moyes' boss, Nick. I don't understand why people feel he has, but why does he have loyalty to Moyes? Uh, I agree with what Nick's saying there. The why? sporting director traditionally is yeah. the manager of the managers, right? Okay. Yeah. But, but, but what, okay, but what I'm getting at is, why does everybody think that Noble has any loyalty to Moyes? He only worked with him the last two or three years of his career. Why do we think he has this? Why do we think he has utmost loyalty to Moyes? Truthfully, why do you think that? I don't get why people think that. He owes him nothing. I think none of us really know. It's an assumption that some people are making. It's a, but it's a ridiculous included. assumption. Yeah. And there's also yeah. no way of knowing because we don't know what kind of rapport he has built with with Moyes having played under him or shared a dressing yeah, but, room for yeah. a yeah, number but, of years. My, my, like they spent hours together that we don't know about. So I don't know. It, m m Noble would have got on with every manager there. That's the type of character he is, which is why every manager right. picked him, which is why he played so many games for us under all those different managers. He yeah. will have no loyalty to those managers, though. His loyalty, whether you want to agree with it or not, is to West Ham United because he is a West Ham fan. He played for us for so long. I'm not really sure why people think he's got this misplaced loyalty to Moyes. I don't think he will have. I don't think he will have. Again, though, no, I, look, I assume what you're saying is true. I don't know he's true, but I assume no, what you're I don't saying know he's true. Is, I don't. I assume what you're trying to say is true because you know, literally, the one and only time I met Mark Noble was when he was a 17 year old kid who just broke into the first team. At a West Ham uh, do down at um, in 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 the the East Ham Working Man's Club down Barking Road, I think it was, I yeah. think it was, and uh, and and it, and he was there out with his with his family and a load of other West Ham supporters. So look, <laughs> there's no doubt about the the guy loves West Ham. Um, right. it, you you got it, you got to remember, right? and I know it ain't all about that. But 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 we're allowing ourselves once again to sidetrack from the real issue. Yeah, we do it with Rice with his interviews. Yeah. where he has to do all these presses. We do it with the wrong people. And it's almost like we are constantly blindsided at the reality of the problem at the club, which is the owners. And I know we're not going to talk about the owners tonight, 
And we seem to get our teeth into the wrong people. No, you're right. You're right. But then there's a lot of frustration around at the moment. Yeah. And I think, yeah. Uh, I, and I, I think everyone's looking for <laughs> for a reason. And um, and and I think we're we're seeing uh, uh, as well. We know that Declan Rice is going. That's why he's getting a bit of negative press at the moment. Yeah, but that, but and I think. That, but- I think in a lot of cases, right. John. No, I think in a lot of cases, people have just have, have been quite hurt by that. The fact that he is going and they're lashing out, right? It's, it's, it's no it's, secret, though, Gal. It's no secret. I know it's no secret, but that don't make it good, does it? It doesn't make it no, good. It, it doesn't make it good for a long time that he's not going to stick around. But Gal. Yeah, but, but Danny, it doesn't make it good that your captain, the captain of the team at the moment, is playing game in, game out. We love him. He's a great player. He's a borderline world class player. It doesn't do anything for the <laughs> ego of a. T- it don't do anything for the ego of a typical West Ham supporter to know that. Well, he's fucking off in the summer. How many great? How many? How many world class players have we had in recent years? Well, a pirate, I would. I would say. That's the first, yeah, that's the first one that comes. Okay, to but 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 very few that we produce or get that we keep hold of. No, no, no. Any. No, we you'll never ab- keep hold of world class players, mate. You're absolutely right, but we're struggling third from bottom of the table, and yeah. our captain. You yeah. know, the beating heart of our team, mm-hmm. you know, is going in the summer, right? And so okay. that is just, um, it, you know, for, for, for a lot of people, that is disappointing. And that disappointment leads good, to right. a, a little bit of anger, right? And that's where you you you, you get this stuff because it feels like you, it feels like your girlfriend's playing away with, um, you know, the bloke around the corner when, <laughs> when, yeah. he's, when, when you see him pictured uh, doing TikTok videos with Saka and whatever, you know what I mean? But what's but that's the way of the world now, mate. I, I know. Quick, I, have, I have to ask, just while we're on the topic of rice, it, obviously we we would all in in this perfect world would rather he just stay, finish out his career with West Ham, and just yeah. be this be this legend, gets a statue outside the ground. Yeah, we all want that. But it would everybody be or would everybody agree that like the it would soften the blow a little bit if he went to a a, a different league? So if he ended up in Spain or something. If he ended up in in, in league one, I'd, or I'd prefer that. I'd prefer. I that. would so much prefer that. But why, yeah, yeah. Anywhere. why would you prefer that? Well, because because frankly, I've seen it with so many players that we've lost over the years, right? And you've only got a, you ain't, ain't got to have a long memory, have you? You know, remember Carrick? You remember Defoe? Even you remember Lampard? Even even though we pretended to hate him, we did hate him after a while. But uh, fact is, when you see those players coming back, playing for the big sides, hurting your side. It ain't it ain't pleasant, is it? And and I, I wouldn't take any pleasure. I would, you know, Deck will get a good reception when he comes back to West Ham. Of that, I've got no doubt. But I ain't going to take pleasure in Deck playing for Man United or Liverpool or Arsenal coming to our place and helping turn us over. You know, to me, he's just an opposition player at that point. And and more so yeah, because so- I I don't want him to. If, if he does leave, obviously, it, it's important how you leave a club. Uh, you know, exactly. obviously if it's on, on, on the right terms and everything, but I, I would like to see him go somewhere where he's not going to just end up in the same situation as Calvin Phillips. Yeah. Maybe he made his big move a little bit too early and he's played more minutes for England than he has for city this season. It's insane. Well, so, but, I, yeah. but, but I, it, I think we're, I'm, I'm getting a little bit off track. Right? It's interesting. It's in... No, 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 not at all. It's interesting. That's a valid point. It's a valid point. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. You say it about rice because obviously I saw the, um, the uh, rumour that PSG might be coming in for him. Now, to me, going to PSG would be somewhat of a, it's not, it's, you know, the French league isn't as respected as most leagues in Europe. It's PSG really not. have tried to, PSG, PSG, sorry, have tried for donkey's years to win the Champions League and haven't managed with all the money they're pumping. So I'm not sure PSG is the right club for him either. If he's going to go abroad, he's got to go somewhere like Real Madrid, but I don't think he is going to go abroad. I think he's going to stay in Premier League. Um Unfortunately, yeah, that's think, probably what will happen. Yeah, and at I think the same, at the same saying? time, though, at the same time, you know, PSG have got Mbappe playing for them. It can't be the the worst um, uh, league in the world, can it? Uh, uh, they've got a, a surely they it's, could put together a team that's capable with their money, that's capable of winning the Champions League, irrespective but, of how strong their local league is. Yeah, but Gal, they've had that money. They've had the money pumped into them for donkeys years now, and they have not yeah. won the Champions League yet. They've they've had. It's fantastic, isn't it? They've, they've been a little bit of, you know, they've been like the French Galacticos, like Real Madrid used to be. And, and yeah, they have. the difference is Real Madrid won the Champions League trophies. Uh, PSG, you know, they, they always seem to fall out in the quarterfinals or something like that. Um, there's a question here, which we might want to touch on quickly, from English Yardie. Panel, I have a question. Where does Moyes 
lie, one through to 20 with current managers in the Premier League. Our season is a shit show. It's the ownership that's the problem. It's the ownership that's the problem, yeah. I'm numb, to be honest. I hate this feeling. Well, I mean, the manager's positioning is where his team are and where they end up, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that, Danny, what, what, what do you think on that? On where Moyes ranks as, in, in terms of the... the yeah, where do you think he lit? He, where do you think he sits 1-20 to 20 in, the, in the Premier League I, rankings? I mean, I, to echo what, what John just said, I mean, the, the proof is in your results. Yeah. The proof is is that that's his report card is the yeah. league table right now. So... Uh, do I think he's worse than the the, uh, the remaining two uh, managers under him? I don't know, but right now it, it, it's atrocious. It, it's not, it's definitely not good enough. It's not good uh, enough for the Premier League. I don't believe. I, I can't think of another manager because the ones below us um, are at least going out and trying to win games and trying to score goals. Um, I, you know, for, for me, I'm not particularly a fan of of Cooper at Forest, but I was out with somebody who, somebody who supports Forest the other day, and they really like Cooper, right? He's so, very well. He's very well yeah, respected, you know, yeah, in, in, yeah. in the management coaching fraternity. He's very well respected. Yeah. So I've just got to say, I've got to say, for me, he would be twentieth, and I think we're going to touch on. <laughs> We're going to talk. No, we're going to talk. You all. I'll tell you what. Make it easier. Think of someone who's, who's, who's worse. Who's worse. Who's, I'm, who's not, I'm not. I'm just finding it funny. I just find it yeah. funny. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just find it yeah. funny. <laughs> and 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 we'll go through the Opta stats uh, soon. We won't go through the stats. We'll just we'll just brush brush on that. And that that just graphically demonstrates how our eyes have not been deceiving us this year. It really mm. has been as bad as it seems. Mm -hmm. All right. John says it's the way of the world. We are always going to lose our best players to bigger clubs. Imagine yeah. being a Southampton supporter. I think that's the case, John. But like I was trying to say, from a psychological point of view, I think people uh, when they get when they get hurt by something like this, and it is hurtful for uh, yeah. for one of your for your best player to be sold to someone else, potentially to a rival, is hurtful, and people react by lashing out. Right? Yeah, I know. And that's but I, where... I don't. I I, I don't. I, I, it, I'm not hurt by him leaving. I'm disappointed, but I'm also used to it because. Oh yeah. We exactly. Rio Ferdinand, Michael Carrick, Joe Cole. Trevor, you know, Trevor Sinclair, even. I know he came to us when he was a bit older, but you know, we've never held on to anybody world class and we never will. And it's really? just the fact of it. You know, we was having that debate the other day, Gal, weren't we? When we were sort of having a bit of an argument on WhatsApp, which is unusual. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when we were talking about, are we a big club? And me and you had a little bit of a difference of opinion with it. And I think you misunderstood what I was saying when I said we're not a big club. And I know we are in terms of fan base, fan base loyalty. I know we are in terms of the fact that we've been in the Premier League. I think we've been in the Premier League something like 26, 27 seasons since its, since its invention in 92, whenever it was, right? So we're one of the teams... We've been in the, been Premier, in the Premier League, League longer than we haven't. We've been in the yeah. Premier League yeah. more than most. And we've yeah. still done... We've done sweet FA. And it's well, all because we've never had the right ownership model in all those years. That's what it boils down to. I, and we I never, just we think it... I think when you talk about big, I mean, look, there are giant clubs, and I and I'd, I'd use t-shirt sizes rather than big, medium, and small because I do believe, no, because I think there Extra are it, medium. There, yeah, it's like Man City and and uh, Man United. They'd be like two XLs, right? Yeah, and then you know you, you get down to, but I, I still think we are a big club. How can you say a club that can fill up a sixty thousand, sixty-two thousand seat stadium every game when the team is just shit? How can you say that is a small club? I didn't say we're small, but I said we're not. Even a, a medium-sized club. We're you know, not a big no. club, now. Well, well, we're not one of the biggest clubs. Of course we're not. We're not one of the top six or one of the top seven. But, um, you know, we, we are one of the one of the big clubs in, yeah, but, the, in the best league in the world. Okay, but, but, but in my mind, Steve, in my opinion, Steve's 100% right here. We are a big club in terms of fan base, but not in terms of winning anything. And that's what it all comes down to, Gal, winning stuff. Forest, you know, I'm 43. Forest. We've won nothing. I'm 43. Forest won the opposite. FA Cup in 80 when I was one. I don't remember that. No, I know, no, but not in Forest. Won two of yeah. uh, what they call Champions League now, European Cup back then. One league title, lots yeah. of league cups. Uh, you remember yeah. they were winning trophies regularly, but their following is relatively small. It's relatively limited. Mm. So, yeah. what, so, so, how does that balance out there? What do you, what do you say? Forest are bigger than us because of the pots that they've won. 
I wouldn't Such say that. Hot Stev yeah. one. <laughs> uh, well, I, w- I just wouldn't say it. I just wouldn't say it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say Leeds are bigger than us. I'd say they, there was a time when Leeds were bigger than us because they ban were. This quite... geezer. Ban, it, ban this geezer. He's questioning my age at 43. <laughs> 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 now, you've got the same name as me, John, but don't give it, son. All right. <laughs> uh, Ipdex, Ipdex, Ipdex says, agreed with Virgil about being a big club, but we've spent 200 plus and we're in the bottom three, for fuck's sake. We could be a big club. But never with this wanker Moyes. I don't disagree, Ipdex, but we will always have those type of managers, mate, whilst we're run by Sullivan. And that's where it all stems from, mate. Was nothing's ever going to change. And as much as I would never want to be owned by Americans or Saudis or Qatarians, morally, maybe, we're only ever going to get bigger if we get sold out to something like that. Moyes is the symptom. Sullivan is the cause. Yes, great point. I love that. I love yeah. that. You are yeah. definitely the intelligent brother. Yeah. <laughs> Barney McGrew just says, Leeds are a bigger club than us. Oh, leave off. They, I think they were once, Barney. I think they were once. I don't think they are now. I wouldn't I wouldn't go for that at all. I mean, based on what? But, you know, you got to say that I I was never in any doubt that we would, we could fill a 60,000-seater stadium. I, I still don't think we should have moved to a 60,000-seater stadium, but I was never in doubt that we could fill it. I always knew we had this big fan base. We do have an enormous fan base, oversized for what we've achieved, right? Yes. And I and, and that's how I, you know, I, that, that's how I measure West Ham personally. I measure I measure us on, um, you know, we, we could, we, when we went to Wembley for a playoff final, a bloody playoff final. I mean, that's something that Arsenal or Chelsea wouldn't get out of bed for, yeah. right? Yeah. We could have sold that Wembley Stadium out two or three times over. You know, yeah. we were just... And, and and when we got to the FA Cup final against Liverpool, I mean, God, those it's like when when we're having no success, we fill the stadium up. When we have a little sniff of success, bloody hell, people come flooding out of the woodwork. We've got, yeah. you, you know, it's a very very well supported sort of supported club. So I don't know how that can qualify as a a medium or small club, or mm. so, or a team that's not as big as Leeds, to be honest. What do you Leeds, think of this? Danny? Leeds of twenty you, years ago, maybe. What do you think of this, Danny? Danny, what's your opinion on this? If we stay up and win the Europa, Rice will go as a hero. If we get relegated, a lot of fans will see him as a villain. It's just how people are. Wow. I would. I really hope he's wrong about that last part. I really. Yeah. Uh, I would like to think that people uh, can't be that, that people can be just that fucking petty. Hmm. But uh, I, I, I think he, I, I think he does go out a hero. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with that first part. Uh, it's no, if, if we now, does he mean if we go down that he'd go, yeah. that he'd go down as a villain? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. I don't know. I, I would hope that the, just the fan base as, as a majority obviously can't speak for everybody all the way over here. Right. But uh, just that I, I would like to think that the, that the fan base as a, as a majority would uh, be a little bit more reasonable and not probably throw yeah. everything on, on your most important player. I think they would be as well. I don't think they. I don't think people would turn the guns on deck. I think you might get a few people simple. turn the guns. On. You can't control everybody, right? A football yeah. crowd is a, is is a is a strange is a strange bunch. You know, you always get the minority voices. But I think nobody would be if we got relegated and he took us down as the captain. I think he would be absolutely devastated. It'd be a, it'd be a really unfortunate way to go out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the flip side. Let's not think about that. You know, we have a we have a, a, a week of games next week where we can turn this season around. You know, we've got yeah. Southampton, we've got Newcastle a few days later, and then we've got Fulham away. It could be a, a defining week of our season. Yeah, massive. and if we if Nine we can have a good week, oh yeah, yeah and if we, fucking points there, and that could turn it around completely, right? You know, if we could have a if we could end up being relatively safe and win the Conference League, then he leaves a hero, right? So flip that on 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 the head what you just what you just read there, right? Yeah. Yeah, right off yeah. into the sunset, yeah. You know, go go He's... win bigger trophies at a bigger club somewhere. But, that, but 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 that's the thing as well. Like Danny sort of said earlier, you know, Rice would not want to leave when we get relegated, will he? That would be his worst ending to his West Ham career. Oh yeah. Leaving whilst we get so he more than most cares because he knows, you know, he knows how he would be perceived. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, I remember you. You was the uh, captain when we got relegated. You know, yeah, that chaps my ass that. even thinking about it. No, he don't want that on his CV, mate. He, so he, you know, no. let, let's let's be real. You know, no, I think you're right. I think you're right. So so look, there's that. Uh, yeah, we we'll go through see if there's any comments on that before we move on to the next. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So Barney McGrew says I work with a Leeds fan, and he would laugh in my face if I said we were bigger than them. 
Well, just because he laughs, don't mean he's right. Get back to you guys. I'm going to message my friend Robbie, who's a big Leeds fan, and tell him that West Ham are a bigger club than Leeds. (laughs) You do that, do that, Danny. I'm going to do do that that literally right now. Dave Dave Everett says, "Remember Scotty Parker? He didn't get a great reception when he came back. He he, he didn't. But then again, yeah, that was off the back of a relegation and off the back of him. I mean, I got to be honest, right? Scotty Parker was fantastic, wasn't he? Yeah, three three player of the years, three player of the years. But even I was disappointed when he wanted his move away to Spurs and we got relegated. He started playing the season in the championship. He scored a goal. He didn't fucking celebrate. It was like he he was annoyed at being there, at still being there, you know. So I but think he still that scored. Left a bad taste. It left, he a still bad played taste well. left a bad taste in people's mouths. So you know, you can't do stuff like <laughs> that. It's an emotional game. Peter Mulber said, I wasn't saying I turn on deck. I absolutely love the guy. It's been a pleasure yeah. seeing him play for us. It's just I've seen a lot of people that's I have. Yeah, I've it, seen it. it Gal, I said to you, yeah. I said to you a few games ago where I see it. At the end, we lost to I can't remember who we lost to now. Yeah. He walked around, did his usual thing, and there were a few fans giving him the wanker sign. I couldn't really? believe the eyes. And that's the truth. I'm not lying. Yeah, no, no, no. no, I'm, no. I'm, I'm telling you the gospel truth. And I was like, really? I couldn't believe Ellis, it. I, I've got to run and go catch uh the uh Miami and Texas game in the uh, March Madness tournament. I don't know if you guys even know what that is. No. You enjoy March Madness, Danny. I hope your team wins. I will. Let's go, Kate. Right. Throw, throw up a U for me, fellas. Throw up one of these. Yeah. Well, throw one of one these. Of this is, this is the U. Yeah. Is, that Jesse Ling- is that Jesse Lingard? What's that Jesse Jay Lingard? Oh, no, no, we're not throwing up. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jesse Lingard can get, yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. All right. Later, All right, fellas. Cheers, See you later. Cheers, pal. Right, so and then there were two, right? And there were two. So let's just Thank argue amongst ourselves. Us. Yeah. So, um, right. I love Deck, but I do think he was wrong choice for captain. He's he is too nice. I would give it to Vlad if everyone worked as hard as him. He wouldn't be in the bottom three now. Well, he was he was on the verge of moving to Bayer Leverkusen in January. He wasn't having talks, wasn't he? So Vlad had a bad first half of the season, didn't he? And mm-hmm. and he's but but just lately he's been very very good. Very, very he has good. been very good, and we've, we've been sort of craving his return, haven't we? With Johnson oh, and Kara playing there, we, we've we saying, need him back. Yeah, we need him know. back. Um, oh yeah, I just realised. Um, you know that? You know the Leeds player Gonto, the Italian, the little fella. Yeah, yeah. He got injured tonight playing for Italy, so that might oh. not help Leeds. Just as an off thing, I think someone put it in the chat as well. Um, Lawrence Salmon says spending big money doesn't make you a bigger, better club. Under the wrong management and board, it, it, it's what yeah. it stems from from us. It's one of many uh, attributes, right? You know, it's it's spending power, it's fan base, it's you know, if you want to look at what you've done, I don't think history matters. I don't think if you won a cup thirty years ago, it matters. But if you've won maybe trophies in the last five years, for instance, I'd include Leicester. Leicester have done the domestic treble, right? Mm. In the last five or six years, so arguably, when you look at, you'd, you'd, you'd even say Leicester might be above us in the pecking order, definitely, right? No idea, I've but, no idea what this means. Claret then, and booze is part of the Illuminati. What's that mean? Yeah, well, I don't know. But then you go to Leicester's ground, you go to <laughs> Leicester's ground, and you realise it's a two-bob little, you know, fucking Meccano stadium, isn't it? Right? And, um, I, and, still have and their, I still have their league title, though, Gal. <laughs> and their FA Cup and their League Cup. And their FA Cup and fucking something, <laughs> mate. Yeah, I know. My, boy, my boy's eleven, and I'm still no. He's just well, he's just turned twelve. I'm still trying. I'm I've had, I'm having to start to convince him that we are still a good club because he's looking around there thinking we're not that good, Dad, are we? As you said. Oh no, we, we will rise again, John. It just might take a while. Rise again? When have we ever risen? Okay. True. The real Simpsons says, "How can you?" Say, this is you, gal. How can you say we're a big club when we don't even own our own ground? We have zero assets. That we even own the corner flags on that. Well, I, I, I think I think you know you got to bear in mind. Last time it was valued when Kratinsky, and we're going to talk about that in a sec. Um, bought into the club, they valued it at eight hundred million. You don't have to own your own. Your own your own you, you could look at a ground as a liability, unless it's a ground like Tottenham that's a multi multi purpose arena. They're going to use for other things like NFL as well. Basically, you own a football ground. It's an asset that sits there and does nothing every two. You know, for two weeks. And then you're playing yeah. it again. It does nothing. Two weeks, you know. And, and I and I think you, the deal we've got with that stadium, the which is a watertight hundred year deal, 
Yeah. Even though, even though I can't stay in the stadium, I really wish we were back at Upton Park. You got to say that that is a it's great a deal that we've got. It's a yeah, great from a deal. business from a business yeah. perspective. Yeah. Sullivan and that created a fantastic deal. And that's what we're talking about. If you're talking about big and and he turns it onto assets, yeah. And we're talking about then we're talking about the business and what the what you know assets in terms yeah, the of the business, football club the business are side of it doesn't assets, matter to a fan, does it? No, 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 no. But playing we assets don't really... are, 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 are the biggest thing. You know, our biggest playing asset at the moment is deck worth between yeah. seventy and a hundred million, whatever, right? And and yeah. you look at all the others we've got as well. Yeah. What's this one here from Ross Denby? Stadium is shit, badge is shit. We have no identity <laughs> anymore and have a manager to match. Well done, Sullivan. You're a great chairman and supposedly a supporter. Just yeah. to interject, that should have been Y O U R apostrophe E, just so you know. Oh, I'm not you know, grammar not, police, grammar police. Putting you up on it or anything, but yeah. I learned that uh, myself the other day. Um, John McCarthy says, Vlad is supposed to be injured and he gets an assist. Yeah, he got an assist in one of their qualifiers. Did he? Yeah. Uh, what the fuck was that all about? Is Moyes pulling our pisser again? <laughs> we, we spoke about this many times before. We have no leader in the dressing room. Rice cannot do the job. Who would fear him? I don't know. Well, you know, I, I I don't know. I don't know, Rice. I've never been in a position of Rice being my captain. We can only assume, based on what we see on the pitch, that he is sometimes he comes across as a little bit petulant, right? Mm. He, ain't, he ain't done that lately. He hasn't done that lately, but there was a period of time Mid mid season to early season, where he was throwing his arms up in the air and everything else, when yeah. the pass didn't yeah. reach him or a player didn't do what he wanted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, as, as I've said before, you play alongside two check enough, we'll all be throwing our arms up at times. Not yeah, saying but, it's right. I'm not saying it's right. But. Yeah, but like like Noble Rice is really learning on the job, isn't he? Because yeah. being yeah. a a captain when you when you're captain in a team that's full of seasoned internationals, a lot of them older than you. It must think, be tough. I think also it's very easy to, to become captain when things are good. And yeah. quite quickly this season, once given the armband, things turn sour pretty quick. So learning on the job in a good situation is far easier than learning in a job in a relegation battle, which is what we're in. I'm not making excuses yeah. for him, yeah. but nobody knew it was going to pan out this way. We all, all right. thought we were going to have a far better season, didn't we? So John, John's saying that's another thing that we can consider, right? Leicester's got fabulous training facilities. Uh, they got yeah, well, all right. Does that make them bigger than us? I mean, you know, again, it, it, it's great, it's great, it's fantastic. But land is cheap, and Leicester. Very true. So yeah. sausage rolls. Um, Barney McGrew question. Barney McGrew's he's quite angry. You see, when yeah. Nick's not here, Barney McGrew's <laughs> quite normal. But when Nick's here, Barney McGrew's just pulling his plunger, isn't he? Yeah. Um, question: Would it be better for our long-term future to go down? as we could rebuild with our current crop of 18s getting every chance. To... It's a fantastic question. I'll tell you what, right? When we got relegated, um, I don't know what time it was, but when we ended up um, uh, getting promoted, we had Tomkins and Elliot Wald. You know, they got an Anton Ferdinand. You know, when we got relegated, they got their chance, right? And they turned out to be, you know, good assets for us. They did, Again, they didn't quite make it once we came back up into the Premier, Premier League, apart from, you know, Tompkins is now playing at Palace, but, you know, he's had a good couple of years there. And Anton had a sort of checkered career, didn't he, in the Premier League. But yeah. I do agree that if there are, if these, if these under 18s are as special as they seem to be, by the way, um, we should look up when that semi-final is because that that's they're trying to encourage people to go and watch that, aren't they? It's on a uh, Thursday I'll, night. I did look it up. I'll it's the look. 6th I'll of April or something. Yeah, have a look. Have a look. But, I mean, what, what I'm saying is, similar to those players I just mentioned, if there are if there is, you know, from, the, from this team that could potentially win the Youth Cup, if there's three or four players that they think are going to make the grade, getting relegated might not be the end of the world because no. you would have a chance of bringing them through, right? I mean, we would lose all of our big stars, uh, our, our big name stars that we've got at the moment, wouldn't we? I think, again, it's another thing about biz the business side of things and the playing side of things. We yeah. know that from a business perspective, getting relegated may not be the best thing, especially if we don't bounce straight back up. Yeah. But a lot of fans, and I'm a little bit probably in agreement, I would be of the hope that if we got relegated, it would make Sullivan leave and sell up. However... If recent things are to be believed, he may not be looking to sell up anytime soon anyway. Um, mm. So I wouldn't want to get relegated, no. But I can see the potential in it, if you know what I mean, from a yeah. on-field perspective. So, so, 
see I, I'm I'm of the opposite opinion of you right is that I think staying up is the only way he's going to sell I don't think he's going to sell if his asset depreciates and we get relegated right. he's going to want us to get it back up back up again so as he can get the full price um yeah so, yeah so and I and I and I firmly believe he will go that takes us on to our, our next topic, though, right? And this is about the LLDC with West Ham. Apparently, there's a lawsuit going on. They've spent yeah. seven million quid on lawyers so far, suing West Ham um, for various things. But one of the biggest um, uh, things is around Kratinsky and his investment that he made. Um, that came. That investment was made before the embarrassment clause expired, right? Mm. And uh, and they're saying that they're owed some compensation uh, over that. And this could end up being, you know, if we imagine if we lose this lawsuit and we end up paying them, um, you know, we end up paying them whatever we owe them in terms of compensation. But it would also be legal fees on top of that as well. So that could be a bit of a disaster if we end up going down mm. and end up on the on the wrong end of that. And that was the same article where they said that by the end of this decade, the taxpayer would have spent one billion quid on that stadium. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually think the uh, opposite to this story. Um, I actually think that the fact that the one billion pound cost to taxpayers mm. would actually more than likely um, persuade the cheap sale of the club of, of the stadium. Sorry, yes. possibly get rid of the bloody thing, get rid of the noose around our neck as taxpayers, as 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 a, as a government run body that they are. What they called Olympic London legacy or whatever, you know, it, it just it just stinks of what a waste of money, um, and it may actually play into the hands of owners, said owners, who are possibly able to then pick up a cheap asset and add massive value to the club. Well, I've got no doubt that the the people that were interested that were being what were they called? I forget what they were called now. The ones that Tom the the mattress guy was was plugging and Tony Cotty got behind oh, yeah. and whatever else. Yeah. Um, I'm no doubt that that was a land deal, but I've also haven't really got much of a doubt that Kratinsky's in this for the, for the land deal as well. And, and with, um, uh, I think Sue Fowl, or was it Sue Fowl or Suchek said in an interview that the future owner Kratinsky. Sue Fowl, yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that was, um, that was maybe a clue as, <laughs> as to what's going to happen. The thing yeah. is with him, the thing is with Kratinsky, I mean, he's never owned the majority stake in a football club before. No. He's always owned a minority stake. Um, Sparta Prague, which I think that's the one he owns, isn't it? They've always performed, you know, quite average, you know, med mediocre uh, under mm. under his um, under his minority ownership. But who knows what he'd do? I mean, what what would it be? It wouldn't be a vanity project. The guy's a businessman, wouldn't it? Would, you know, it, it'd be surely trying to get hold of that um, stadium and that land. And well, that, uh, yeah, exactly what I mean. So it, it plays into the hands of profit, doesn't it? And 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 as we know, Sullivan, supposed West Ham fan. And, and Kratinsky, they are business people first and foremost. You very rarely, I've said it a million times, I'm bored saying it, but but most people that get involved in football now ain't there for fun. You know, you know, you, it's not like Jack Walker in the Blackburn days where he just literally ploughed all of his hard-earned cash into it for no real want of a return. Uh, these guys these days are in it for pure profit. The only difference to that is the Saudis and the Qatarians who almost do it as a vanity project against each other about which clubs they own. And obviously, interestingly now, what you've got is a situation where UEFA are actually looking to get rid of the rule where you don't have to worry about owning more than one club in Europe. You can, they're looking at the possibility of it where you can own more than one club major share of because they know that it's coming to a head where a lot of European clubs are going to be owned by similar types yeah. of people. Again, it's no, John. Again, no, John. There, there were good reasons for outlawing that, and that's because you there know are. crooked competitions, right? You don't want, yeah. you, you know, you don't want to make, and you don't want teams to turn into feeder clubs. And feeder clubs already exist all over Europe anyway, as part of that Red Bull model, don't they? Um, I, I think they're doing everything, changing the rules to satisfy the the Middle East ownership. I think mean, you're going to see more Middle East owners coming in. 
But yeah, yeah. I, I think um, it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. You know, if Kretinsky was to take it over, I think he would by the same. So what would, so say for instance, they, you know, a, a new owner, be it him or someone else, bought that grand, that, that, that whole stadium and, the, and I assume the immediate land around it on Fish Island for one, one quid or something like that. And then that's to take on all of the running costs and everything else, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you ain't going to take on the running costs and make a loss, are you? Right. So that would surely push them towards doing something uh, quite significant, you know, whether that is and that land over there must be worth an absolute fortune yeah. now. Right. Yeah. So surely that would give the incentive to, um, a, you know, a, a good businessman to find a bit of land uh, to build a stadium elsewhere or alternatively do something with that one. So Tommy, Tommy, Tommy's got an interesting point here. He said, as a government owned building, wouldn't it have to go to tender? If they decided to sell it, they couldn't just sell it to West Ham. But a few people in the chat have sort of replied directly to Tommy. Tommy, it's a first refusal deal. Um, yeah, they were offered it. Put, I can't find it now, but somebody put a great point. Who would want to bid for a stadium where they know West Ham have got like a 90-year lease left on it? That's, you know, that's that's another interesting well, thing. Well, I just West think it would be a quick and easy sale to sell it to West Ham, wouldn't it? West Ham were already offered it. Apparently, they're already offered it. So I think that's uh, that is that is usually true, Tommy. What you said about public. Uh, just want to. I just want to apologise. I picked someone up earlier for their pronunciation. Um, so I want to apologise to Moshe. Apparently, it's Qataris, not Qatarians. I do apologise, mate. I'm uh, not an expert. <laughs> Qatarians. I didn't hear that. Fucking old. Well, when they're right in the back, of, when they're in the back of my London cab, they're lovely people. I never ever. So I do apologise. I'll I'll see what they say. I bet we will see London Stadium on Homes Under the Hammer soon. Just just see Dion Dublin rambling on about it. <laughs> the before and the what after. What does that mean? It's above it, Homes Under the Hammer. It's where they go, where they go to people buy a, a house in an auction and they do it up what's, and they show you the Dion, before and the after. What's Dion Dublin got to do with it? He's a presenter. Oh, you know why I don't know what it is, Gal? Because I don't work from home and watch daytime TV like you, mate. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out working. <laughs> you only know who Qataris are because they tip well. Oh, whatever. That's what he's saying. Isn't it? This is right. Said, our utilities are in foreign ownership, so the authorities aren't going to worry about football clubs having multi ownerships. Good no, point. I think they just—I think they just want the cost off their books. I mean, if they're making a twenty million quid loss every year, I mean, quite honestly, you just want that liability gone, don't you? Um, yeah. But yeah. but but surely I mean I I don't know I, I that's a very expensive uh, I I don't know what it would cost to actually remove the stadium from that site you know and actually prepare that land for it probably it probably costs an absolute fortune to do like that alone but somebody said the other day that that was quite a small plot of land now now that all the buildings are going up around it well, well, no it isn't. Going on. Yeah. There's a lot going on around it. There's every, a lot of every, apartments going up everywhere. So the land's slowly disappearing, you know? It, it is. It is. But you have still got quite a large footprint immediately surrounding that stadium. And uh, if you take if you pick the stadium up and take it away, there's an enormous footprint of land. And so that's what I'm thinking. You know, maybe that would be uh, a sensible way forward. But I wonder how much that would cost. Um, you know, I, I don't know what it costs for, for instance. I mean, you know, if you went and built a, a purpose built football stadium for West Ham, you wouldn't be building a Tottenham style, um, you know, glamorous thing, would you? It'd be, it'd be, be more like a, an upgraded version of Leicester's or something like I that. I wouldn't want to. I mean, I've, I've had arguments with Nigel about this, but I actually, as much as I know the Tottenham stadium's great for multi purpose use and all that, it does not feel like a football stadium. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. Not and, what as does either. But uh, I'm no, and you know what they're doing now? They're going to build an underground go kart track underneath White Hart Lane, so they're turning it into a kind of theme park, right? It's going to have NFL, Premier League, go karting, do you think, abseiling do you think, down the top of the fucking. You know, do you think the, do you think the players are going to have to take on duties like Harry, <laughs> Harry, Harry Kane are going to be behind the burger van? Do you want large fries? <laughs> Yeah, it's part of their contract, they've got to work in the theme park. <laughs> the one thing they ain't considered, though, you know, you you you, you want to get all these people to a shithole in 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 North London. You, you, there's no transport links. Mm. There's no transport links. The awful. traffic's terrible. Yeah, awful, awful. Yeah. I've taken I've taken um like foreign foreign supporters of Tottenham. You know, going to Tottenham for their first game. Yeah, and they get in the cab and they say Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, please, and. You know, halfway through the journey, I can see him looking, thinking, "How far is this gaff?" And, and yeah. then you start getting into the area, like, which this is, is a war the most zone. pleasant area. 
Just in regards to Harry Kane. Yeah. Andy Walsh says, no spit in your chips, John, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did you what did you dig up about Harry Kane's brother, Charlie Kane? Oh yeah, talking about the Canes. So this is this is Harry Kane's brother, yeah. Charlie Kane, <laughs> who is Harry Kane's agent, and he runs his own football agency company. But guess what? He only has one player on his books, his brother. But he gets up and gets dressed in a suit every day. I mean, what a knob. He's, he's naked from the waist down in that picture. You oh, know. But yeah. imagine that. I mean, you couldn't get any sadder than that, could you? I think he, he's got a briefcase as well. He must have a briefcase. He's probably a briefcase wanker, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that just sums it up, doesn't it? I mean, what's the point of that job? I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, and what else has happened this week? I think um, uh, Roy has, has gone to um, a lot of this. Sorry, sorry, I'm catching up on all this news this week. Sorry, yeah, people. Yeah, but, been uh, yeah, I've yeah. been all, all around traveling everywhere. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, Roy's taken over. What do you think about Roy? Do you think he's going to um, keep him up? But I, 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 I think he will keep them up. And I, I think probably Vieira would have kept them up anyway. I don't think it's because of Hodgson. But, you know, I can sort of understand why they brought him in. But an interesting stat that came up was the fact that Roy Hodgson has been the oldest Premier League manager on three separate occasions. I mean, <laughs> he hasn't changed one bit in the last two years and 300 days or whatever it is, is it? But, I mean, that is a great stat in itself, isn't it? I mean, he looks absolutely oh. chuffed with himself, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I think he'll keep them up, but I think it's more for the fact that they've had a lot of heart. Technically, on paper, they've got their easier fixtures coming up because they're playing so many teams in the bottom half now. They're playing well, unless, loads unless of teams below them. Unless I don't win them, I mean they're struggling yeah. to score goals like we are, and um, are. there'll be there'll be plenty of there'll be quite a few players up for grabs if they went down, like Alacy and Eze. Um, apparently, Saha is Zaha Saha is um, has already arranged a deal to go and play in the Middle East somewhere. Yeah, he's out of contract, and apparently they've offered him like something like two hundred grand a week to go and play in the Middle East. I think it's the same league as Ronaldo, if I'm right. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, he's 30. He, he, he said he wanted to play Champions League football. He's got no chance of being a starter in any of the top six, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, no, he's a yeah. squad player. He's a squad player at that, at that level. Um, but I think he believes his own hype. I've never really overly rated Zaha. I'll be perfectly honest with you. But they have got they have got some good players. As Steve says in the chat, they've got that defender, Mitchell. Um, you know, we could even see James Tompkins coming back, eh? Well, the thing is, James Tompkins. I was, I was, I was listening about him as well. Apparently, he's really struggling now. But he yeah. is basically their first choice centre half. Got he's, a lot of injuries, um, though, I think, as well. In yeah, the back. he's so having become, a bit of a mare. Yeah, I, I was. I, I think we sold him too early, Tompkins. I got to be honest. We could have got a couple of years out of him. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame when yeah. it, when he uh, when he went. I personally think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so look, you know, another thing I've obviously heard is the whole thing that's going on at Everton. Yeah. Um, and. I read, I read an article today where, you know, Everton could face a points deduction. Now, as much as this may fill us with hope in terms of filling up another relegation space and making us safe, if you like, like the Man City debacle, what's going on? This ain't going to happen overnight, is it? This is going to take years, you'd imagine, no. anything like this. I don't know, you know, because you've got to be punished in the same season that the offence was committed. Did it? Is it from this season or last season? Or what it's is it? This season, apparently, yeah. Uh, sorry, right. last. Uh, what they had a deficit last summer. It was something like 120, 130 million. They said, but the majority of right. it they said was made up from losses during COVID. Um, they they waste money like well, just like us, don't they? Yeah, they do waste a lot of money. Half a billion pound they spent on players. I think you know they're getting nowhere. Yeah. Are they? That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, um, there was an uh, there was a, something I was watching on on before I got on the plane today was about the uh, the Optus stats report that was published um, uh, earlier in the week, uh, and 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 Gio and Gonzo and Hammerchat did a good uh, sort of detailed appraisal of this, and uh, yeah, it, it 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 was the upshot of it is even based on stats, you can actually prove that Moyes has not really changed our playing style at all. So so you'd be glad to know that our eyes have not been deceiving us. They are he's playing in pretty much exactly the same way, but being nowhere near as um effective in doing it. It also shows that Skamaka is out has the best XG in terms of chances converted. Right. So 
So that, 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 that's on the basis that we don't actually create many chances at all. It also yeah. shows that Suchek will come to, to the strikers in a minute. Uh, yeah. It also shows that Suchek has been much worse. I mean, just just so so again, these are all. This is just um, really. This has been our perception, right? This is just confirming that our eyes have not been deceiving us, right? And then finally, it shows that Paqueta has been totally ineffective compared to what he did for Leon last season yeah. and the season yeah. before, right? Well, just 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 to hit on Paqueta, he yeah. has been absolutely roasted by the Brazilian media because of his performance against Morocco. They lost to Morocco two one yesterday. Oh, I really? Think it was. Yeah. And Aguirre, Aguirre, Aguirre got loads of praise um, from Moroccan fans and the media and that, but Paqueta got absolutely slagged off. They said he was absolutely terrible. I didn't watch the game, but um, it's interesting with Paqueta because I think the jury's out on him a lot. A lot of West Ham fans are sort of saying he's the most un-Brazilian Brazilian you've ever seen. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. I, I like him. I like him. But what was they saying? The stats, sorry. Well, it basically, I mean, it, it, listen, it doesn't quite tell the story. It doesn't quite tell the story, but it shows that, that with with Leon, he was much more effective in the um, attacking areas of the pitch, right? right. Um, and with us, he's not because he's he started off playing in attacking areas, but then he was pulled back and he's played deeper and deeper and deeper, isn't he? So yeah. so we've signed, a, you know, we've, we've got a Brazilian central defensive midfielder. Whereas I think Leon had, you know, maybe uh, a, a number eight instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so that's so going back to the strikers. Yeah. Put a picture up again. Go on. Put a so, picture up again of the yeah. three so, strikers. So we have we have three strikers. We have um, Skamaka, Gianluca Skamaka, first season in the Premier League. He scored eight in twenty-seven games in all competitions. Yeah. That's not a bad return for someone in his first season. I know in brackets most of those are in Europe, but hey, is what it is. Danny Ings scored nine in twenty nine in all competitions, so that's for us and Aston Villa. Yeah, two for and us. Then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. In bracket us. in brackets against Forest. Yeah. And um and Mikel Antonio, who scored four goals in all competitions. I haven't got the number of games that he's played. I, I was too lazy to look. Two at of them. That. Two of them against Larnaca, weren't they? Away. Yeah, two of them against Larnaca. <laughs> in brackets. Right. Yeah, in brackets. So, uh, no matter how you look at it, look, none of this is massively impressive in terms of stats. Uh, no. Nearly, you know, three quarters of the way through a season from all of our strikers. Skamaka has had injuries. He's had quite a lot of. He's had, he's been in and out of the team, hasn't he? And there's yeah. also been times when he's he, he's sort of been playing with his head down a little bit. It doesn't look like he's been enjoying. He's been enjoying life. Um, but where would you? How, how, how would you? Who would you say is our best? striker and who who should we who should we stick with who should we play around in your opinion i thought before before skamaka got injured the first time around i was seeing a nice progression in him he was looking good he was looking sharp he was linking up play he was bringing down balls with ease you know and i thought he looks he looks like a player yeah. obviously he got the injury and since the injury he may well have fallen out with moyes i think it looks like there's a bit of a looks like there's a bit of a you know, opinion, difference of opinion over style, etc. He's obviously cut ties with his agency, I believe, as well. They yeah. fell out of each other. Lack of, it was called a lack of trust. So he hasn't had the most settled of starts. And if we look at the perceived Italian mentality, they, they are perceived generally, we, we can say from De Canio, as a talk sort of players who quite often are quite volatile, quite emotional. And there's people in the chat have said who maybe just need an arm around their shoulder quite often. And I don't think Moyes is the type of manager to do that. I don't think he's an arm around the shoulder type of guy. He's no red nap, is he? Um, Danny Ings, we haven't seen much of him. Obviously, he scored two goals against Forest, but we know he's worth in terms of Premier League striker. He's scored goals wherever he's gone. Um, yeah. And then there's Antonio, who's carried the burden of us not having a striker for three years, right? Yeah. Um, and whether you like it or not, he's our top Premier League goal scorer of all time, although he hasn't had much competition. Yeah. And he is past his best. But probably from the perspective of Moyes, if Moyes continues to play the same system, then for that job, for that role in a Moyes setup, Antonio is probably the best striker we've got for that system. Yeah. But who's the best striker? Who's the striker we should probably build around? It's got to be Skamaka, isn't it? Because well, you know, I, I, we played the money so. and we've got to persist. I mean, by the way, I I I 
short changed Antonio. He got eighteen. He's got eighteen thirty one in all competitions. So they're all very similar. To be fair, um, sorry, that was just my dodgy work at the airport earlier. Uh, trying right. to find out how many goals he scored, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think if you're gonna if you're gonna make an investment in, you know, who he is, either well, he's he's no longer you, you wouldn't say he's a first choice for Italy, even though he he, he does still start quite regularly for them. Um, yeah. And from what we've seen so far, you know, guy is is um, he, he seems to be an instinctive striker. He knows where the goal is. He's got a hell yeah. of a shot on him. He's yeah. not backward in coming forward and having a pop at goal, is he? No. Um, uh, but he just can't play in a system where he is the... the, the you can't get him to play in the Antonio role where you're going to get him to uh, play as a, a one-man up front bullying defenders. That is just not his... Um, no. That's just not his game. So no. I think I think Skamaka is the best uh, option by far. But only if we're going to play to Skamaka's strengths. I think if we're not, uh, we might as well stick with Antonio for the rest of the season. You know what? what what's the point with what's the point in using Skamaka if you're not going to use him properly? Yeah, and a lot of people have said that play Skamaka in a deeper role behind Ings or whatever. You know, that in hindsight that would be brilliant. But we just yeah. you can't see Moyes changing the system that he's employed and that he's persisted with this season, especially. And that's the yeah. shame about it is, is that, you know, all these Italian... I mean, I've read articles where the Italian press have said pretty much that Scamacca would walk back into Eli, any Serie A, Serie A, Serie A, whatever they say. Yeah. You know, walk into any top Italian team straight back in. And I've even read an article today in the in Italian press where um, apparently Juventus are prepared to sell... What's their Serbian striker's name? Vla, Vlahovic? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the, the young twenty-three year old, they're prepared to sell him to Arsenal, and 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 if they do go ahead with that deal, that Skamaka will be top of their list to bring him back to Italy. That says a lot, doesn't it? Can't and, be wrong. No, and apparently Filippo Inzaghi took a real close interest in, um, you know, and he was a great striker as well. T- taking a, he took a um, such a close interest in in Skamaka's development when he was younger. You know, um, yeah, these people. There's a lot. There's a lot of people in Italy who think oh, this one will end up biting us on the ass worse than Haller. And it's all because we've got a manager who is going to just stick to his guns and do, you know, and play the same way until the end of the season. You know, frankly. Whatever gets us out of the mess, whatever keeps us up, I'm 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 fine with now. You know, whatever will be, will be. Uh, but 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 I don't see. I, I I still do not see. Even though I think he's by far the best striker we've got, Skamaka, I do not see Moyes using him properly. The pro- that, and the, the problem with that is 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 that every you know every game that he doesn't start, every game that he gets ten minutes maybe at the end, he'll yeah. get more and more pissed off. He'll become more and more despondent with his time at the club, with his life in London. Yep. And come the summer, when and if Moyes goes, it might be too late to get Skamaka to even want to stay, no matter who the manager we bring in is. Yep. And, and that's and that's my concern. It may be too little too late then. And, you know, at what point does the owner go, Dave, come on, mate. We, we paid a lot of money for this geezer, 24-year-old. He's sought after, if, if rumours are to be believed, PSG wanted him at the time. And, you know, he'd walk back into any Italian club's yeah. top team in, in the starting lineup. Why, why can't someone put him right? It's like everybody walking on eggshells around Moyes, including the owners. Moyes yeah, seems to be able to do that to players, though, doesn't he? I, I mean, he, 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 he bombed Haller out of the club, didn't he? And Haller went on to do great things. And he didn't use Haller properly. Now he, then he signed uh, Vla, uh, Vlasic. And Vlasic, um, you know, he had a, he had a good first half of the season this year where Torino wanted to sign him. I'm not so sure what whether they're going to end up signing him now or not. But you, you know, nonetheless, he never used him in his in his proper position, which was really playing behind the front man, um, probably in the right hand side of a, of a of a three, or maybe in the number ten position as well. Um, he ended up he played him as a left winger pretty much every time and insisted yeah. that he got through the defensive duties. So he teed every player that comes in gets moist and then they um, they end up being half as effective as they should be. Skamaka as the, now is the latest example. So Moyes seems to be able to, as far as Sullivan's concerned, Moyes can devalue these assets like there's no tomorrow, right? And sell them for half their original price. And there's no there's no downside for Moyes. He'll just go and sign another one. No. No, I mean, you know, I mean, look, Seesaw, if that's his name, he says no team in the world plays two up top, LOL. Yeah. 
But yeah. so what? What does what has that got to do with it? If you need goals, surely you need more strikers on the pitch. I know it's not it's not a science to that, and it yeah. may not be it may not be popular amongst modern football. But I tell you something: if Pep Guardiola, if Pep Guardiola next week went two up front at City, we'd all start following Pep Guardiola's system. You're, you're right. You know. Really you're right. Me. Yeah. Yeah, Pep really Guardiola is a trendsetter. Pep Guardiola yeah. is a trendsetter. If he started playing four four two, everyone would be saying, "Fucking hell, four four two is retro." Let's bring it back. It's like when uh, Chelsea started playing without a striker, or was it Man City played without a striker, and they started calling it a false nine, and then it gave, and then Sam Allardyce played with no striker, and they said Sam was playing with a false nine. He wasn't. He was playing with no fucking striker, right? It was. Um, I still think what we mentioned the other day. Is a good idea, and that's three five two. Three five two. I think we've got the players to play it. When our when our defenders are fit, we've got the players to play it. Um uh, and it gives you the option to have a couple of uh you know, to have two very attacking uh wing backs, to have three in the middle holding the line, and to have two strikers up front being fed by those um, those flying what? wing backs. Uh, do we have to take this sort of abuse? Gary up top, big man, big no, man. No, come no, on. No. Play Virgil and Gary up top, big man, big man combo. Is, is he fat shaming me? And well, you? I'm not, I mean, I'm six foot two, so I'm quite tall anyway. But oh, here we go. Look who's got involved. Oh, from Craggy Island himself. Virgil is more of a wide player. Fuck off. Oh, me. fucking hell. God. <laughs> now, look, 4 4 2 is dead. So unbalanced, you end up completely overrun. Okay, I mean two up front. Maybe not 4-4-2, four, four, but two up front yeah. is my bugbear. Why we don't have two up front when we need goals, you know, I think Skimaka and Ings playing together would be good, personally. I, I, I do as well, uh, you know. And, and three five two, if that if that were the system, I think it would be quite good. Another thing, if Moyes sticks with either four two three one or 4-3-3 three, three or whatever, however you want to dress it up, then... I would look. I, I would like to see if we're chasing the game. We need a goal to throw two strikers on later on in the game. You know when he goes for it, seventy minutes onwards. Do it then. He's never going to do it, is he? He's never no. going to do it, and that's the problem. And 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 you know we've said long before the demise this season, or before it got any worse, we've been saying let's have a go at two up front, and yeah. he's just he's just not he's just not keen on doing it. Unfortunately, and, you know I stuck up for Moyes loads, but. I sort of can't stick up for him anymore because I think he's just blinded by, God knows what you call it. Um, Nick's had, had a lamb gel frazy. Excellent. Well done, Nick. What's, what's that? He's had a lamb gel frazy. Who gives a what? Who cares what? Yeah, I know. Actually, I know exactly. I was, yeah. He it, 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 it sent me a photo. How many pop doms you reckon he had? Oh. 15. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> He didn't demolish a few. Um, so, yeah. Who do you think is the best striker then? Skamaka by uh, by yeah, quite but, a dis- by quite some but not, distance, but not for the Moyes role. But not for the Moyes role. I just can't see you know for this season. I mean, I mean, I'm so far so much in two minds about it because I think you know Ings is starting at the moment and he's trying he's trying to play him up front on his own in a in a an Antonio role. The only one that can play the Antonio role is Antonio. So it, we've got David Moyes for the rest of the season, whether we like it or not. If David Moyes has a sudden idea where he's going to get support at least up alongside Skimaka in the terms of a couple of wide players like Bowen or even Bowen let him play inside with Skimaka as a kind of you know if you want to say it, it's a it, it's kind of a fake version of a front two isn't it yeah you yeah, know that's, um, yeah. just... that's that that would be better than nothing but you've got to get support up around Skimaka and if he does that it would be Skimaka all day long mm. for me but I would really yeah. love to see because I like Ings and he's a proper goal scorer, right? As is Skimaka. Be nice yeah. to see two proper goal scorers on the pitch because you've seen it as well in the past, right? Where we've played two strikers and, um, you know, one striker. You remember where, oh, oh was it Saka? I'm trying to remember back to the Upton Park day, right? But there were two, you know, we were playing two strikers. Saka and, I think, and Valencia. I can't remember, but one, what, it, they were so active and they were pulling defenders over the pitch so much that, you know, one took two defenders away. And it left space for the other one, right? And that's what and that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see that happen. You know, Danny Ings taking some focus away from Skamaka or vice yeah. versa, you know, freeing, yeah. freeing them up. Otherwise, they're just standing there with defenders, aren't they? Yeah. And that, that, that's what I mean. They're just, you know, Ings is... Look, I've, I've heard people say, oh, Ings is just running about. What's he actually doing? But it's yeah. because he don't want to play up front on his own. And I think Nick might have said it, but 
you know, Villa got rid of him because he doesn't like playing the lone striker role. <laughs> yeah, and then you know, he and, comes and, Moyes, with, I, and Moyes wants him to play the lone striker. I know it's like a sick fucking joke, isn't it? It's like a sick <laughs> joke. Yeah, you know. So, but but anyway, look, we move on to next week. You know, we've got um, how long we've we been going? We're, yeah, oh, nearly at one and a half hours. Hour so, half. yeah. So we talk about very quickly. Got a big week coming up. Mm. You know, this is the last quiet week of this season. After after this week, it's going to t- turn to chaos. We've got chaos. Conference League coming back, but it all starts off with that fucking huge week next week. We've got Southampton at home on Saturday. We've got Newcastle at home on Wednesday, and then we've got Fulham away the following Saturday. That is going to be, you know, that is surely the week that shapes our season, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, look, you know, I know that often we've come back from breaks, international breaks, and we haven't started very well, which now, I think it all depends how we come back um, and play against Southampton. Now, we did our predictions in our WhatsApp group, didn't we, the other week yeah. or the other day, and Nick Nick refused, the bloody wimp, he refused to do his predictions until after the Southampton result. I mean, what's, that's, what's the point of that? <laughs> I'm not doing my predictions until after the, you know... But I do agree in so much as if we come back and start well in our first game back, it could be the the medicine we need for the rest of the season. If we come back and, and, and be as tepid and turgid and as shit, basically, as we've been, then we're in all sorts of trouble. Yeah. Because, you know, we know winning breeds momentum and all of that, but this is bigger than that now. This is playing against a team that are worse than us, that are, yep. in my opinion, they are, and the table don't lie. I know people say it's only a couple of points and they've, they've had a little bit of an upturn in form recently, but we have to win this game and we have to play well to win it. And if we as don't, a, we're in trouble. As a Premier League goes, Southampton away are a soft touch, right? Um, you know, in the scheme of things, even though you get no easy games in the Premier League, they will be fighting for their lives and stuff we're like at home, that. We're at home, yeah, we are. They will be fighting for their lives, um, you know. But we've got a good, we've got a good set of players and a good, you know, a good team. I just, you know, if we if we go into the Southampton game being, you know, with with first of all not to lose, uh, it will be so disappointing. It'll be so disappointing. It'll be heartbreaking, right? Because that will just set the shape for the rest of the season. Because if he doesn't do it against Southampton, if he doesn't go for a win against Southampton, that means he's not going to go for a win against Newcastle on Wednesday. That means he's almost definitely not going to go for a win away to Fulham the following week. And then we've got Arsenal coming up. He's definitely not going to go for a win against Arsenal. So this is shit or bust this Southampton game. So on that basis, I agree with Nick, right? How we line up and how we approach the Southampton game is probably going to be very telling for the rest of the season. Yeah, of course. But I just can't see any... I just can't see any change in it, Gal. As much as I hope and pray, I literally cannot see us playing any other way because, unfortunately, look, this this is what turned me, this is what tipped me over the edge, yeah. was the Palace at home game. Yeah. Because there'd been a lot of calls for Moyes to go already before that game. He can't change it. And I was probably living in more than hope than expectation. Um. And after the Palace game, when we literally didn't take the game to Palace, as I felt we should have, that was what tipped me over the edge. Yeah. Um, and if we do it again against Southampton, then it's just not looking good. And, no. you know, look, I want to be positive. Of course I do. I want us to stay up. Of course I do. But if that Southampton result goes the wrong way, then I just can't see any way out. No matter how close it is. Yeah. You know? This these these this game is a must win fucking game. Absolutely is. It absolutely is. And I know it's obvious saying that, you know, but well, well it is. I mean, it, it it's more so than the last one, right? More so than the Villa game, which was another must win. But this is definitely this this is, yeah, yeah. We we don't want to come out of this with a draw. You don't want to draw at home to Southampton. You don't want to respect the point out of that one, do you? No, because this is now like the third coming of this season, right? We yeah. had the start of the season, then we had a break for the World Cup, come back. Still haven't really turned the corner, although we're unbeaten at home, as Nigel will say this yeah. season, uh, this year, in this calendar year, which is true. Um, but this is the third coming of the season now. This is like almost proper last chance saloon to turn the season around. And if we get three points, then it can be I know it's obvious, but it can be such a turning point just for confidence alone. Yeah, you know, forget the three points, but the confidence of the squad 
and the players to look at themselves and go, yeah, we can get out of this. Let us play, you know, the play we want. Let us play on the front foot, you know? Yeah. That would be nice, you know, if we got something out of that week, like maybe six points, um, you know, or, or more, six or seven points out of that week. You know, I, I, I think Newcastle, uh, that they're, they're beatable at home. They're beatable at home. I don't think they're a great, great side. I think they're a strong side, but I don't think they're a great side by any stretch of the imagination. Their form's been really patchy lately. Um, yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree with you to some extent. However, what's the new striker they got from Holland? Who oh, he starts, started playing. Yeah, he started. He started, started playing scoring now. When when yeah, when yeah. they were persisting with Callum Wilson, and yeah. I don't think Callum Wilson scored in about a dozen games, and they've thrown in. They've they've started to start the geezer. I can't think of his name there. A skinny fella, isn't it? Yeah. But they're playing a lot better now because they're, they're they're scoring. So I'm not as confident as you going up there, if I'm honest. But yeah. But do you think that's the curse of the podcast that um Antonio and Callum Wilson run? Did you see that? Did you see that last bit of the podcast when Callum Wilson said to him, "Enjoy playing in the championship." Did he? Is that what he yeah, said? There's, there's cl- yeah. So he was. So I mean, I know it's banter amongst friends, but, yeah. but obviously it's a podcast, so anyone can listen to it and. um uh, Callum Wilson was going to him. What's that league user plan in that Europa Conference League playing against all them farmers and all that? And they're having a bit of banter. That's yeah. it. Isaac. Isaac's the one. Isaac, yeah, yeah. In there. Sorry about that. Swedish fella. But he'd come from Holland, didn't he, or somewhere? Anyway, and then um, Callum Wilson, they're having a bit of banter. And, and, and towards the end, Callum Wilson goes to him, Yeah, yeah, don't worry, mate. Enjoy playing in a championship next season. I was like, Oh, wow. But he's That's allowed to say it, isn't he? You know yeah, I, mean? yeah, I know. I know. Tosser. It just doesn't sit well with us, does it? Doesn't sit well with me at all. No, no, he's one of those players I wish would retire from football because he always scores against us. Or yeah, we wanted him anyway. for years, didn't we? Apparently, yeah, yeah, you know. So, anyway, I think we we, we leave anything else. We let's got? have a look at some of the just have a look at just go through some of the comments in the chat. Yeah, before let's do we, that. Um, so Lewis says the other defining game for me was losing 2 0 at home to Brentford. We've had so many chances yeah. to replace the manager, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I honestly, I, I, I know Brentford are a good side. I know they're a good side, but it doesn't stop it really hacking me off every time we lose to them. I mean, I, 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 it's, not, it's not too much to expect us to be able to compete with Brentford at home, is it? I just think it's, I think it's become there showing a bit of intent, isn't it? Yeah. Sure. Same, same with Brighton. Same with Brighton. Yeah. We don't compete with Brighton. No, they embarrassed no. us the last time. Steve Tiley says, I bet he drops Ariola next week and plays Fab in the mask. Yeah, he probably will. <laughs> Jay Baz, this game is shit or bust. Yeah. Paul Evans says, uh, we are at home. Only a win is acceptable. I agree. Um, David Middleditch, who basically called me a new fat, um, he said, the third coming of Messiah, have faith, lads. Fuck off. <laughs> I think he's being sarcastic. <laughs> Southampton of a young team, get the first goal and their heads will drop. Yeah. English Yardy, Moyes is the worst. I'd rather see Selwyn Froggett as manager. Oh, that's a blast from the past, isn't it? That'd be that's probably a blast in the past that you don't recognise, isn't it? I've no idea what that means. It just sounds like a funny <laughs> name. It's going to be the same shit you watch, Moyes. I have no faith, to be honest. To be honest for me, it's up to the players to change things. Yes, it is. The players need to have a bit of a mutiny on the pitch, don't they? So, Irish Tommy says, Irish Tommy says, Wins against Everton and Forest were turning points, and neither would win against Southampton, in my opinion. Great accent. I love Sorry, Tom. but you it, was, it was just like being there. I was back in Dublin for a minute. All I need now is a cat attacking me, didn't I? Well, yeah. <laughs> Eastside, who I think is at, I think Eastside's in Morocco at the minute, if I'm right. Um, Moyes will target teams around us and set up not to get beat against sides who are in the top half, but at some point he has to go for it. He does his side, but I don't think mm. he'd probably wait till the last game of the season, I think. Yeah. And that's the problem we've got. He'll leave it until it's too late. Um, Nigel says, great to see so much confidence in the players. Oh, Nigel, you always have to take it too far, don't you? I'm gonna really annoy Nigel now, but <laughs> Nigel, God. this is I'm gonna really I'm gonna purposely misquote Nigel just to piss him off. Nigel reckons we're gonna get 12 draws. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, if you go back to that more than just a podcast, podcast prediction, right? <laughs> Nigel said we were going to get something like oh, 23 out of the last 23 points from the remaining games. I'm sure it's 23 points. <coughs> something like that. Something like that. 
But yeah, I think that's it, gal, mate. It's just people slagging me off, really. Excellent, excellent. That's good. We like to see that. Anyway, uh, all right. Well, we got there. I got through with a with a stinking hangover. So, uh, so I just got well, one you've more. Got to trip start to being a bit more professional, mate. You can't keep going away. You shouldn't be drinking before this. But Nick's, Nick's definitely going to have ring sting tomorrow, isn't he? He will do. He will do. Twenty-two points. Don't misquote me, Nigel said. Right, Nigel reckons we're going to get as many points wondering. in the last twelve than we have in the last twenty-four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, look, that's us done. Uh, this, this is like, like we said, this is the last. This is the last show where we're kind of taking it easy and kicking back because there's no football on. From next Saturday, all hell's going to break loose, right? It's, it's back with a vengeance. It's a game every few days for like a whole month, isn't it? It's like nine games. So uh, too much yeah. football when you're shitting yourself. <laughs> yeah, so sit tight. It's going to be good. It's going to be a good. Going to be a fun ride. Uh, you're going to do a ramble this week, John. You're going to treat us to one. Yeah, I'm going to do a little ramble where I'm yeah. going to um, talk about all things West Ham United. Yeah, good stuff. I'm sure Nick will as well. So, uh, that, that's done. Um, we're going to, are there more international games? That's it, isn't it? Is it done? No, that's it now, yeah. No, no, that's yeah. it. Just two. Just two. Oh, so they've got a week of training ahead of Southampton. So, no excuses. No excuses. No injuries yeah. either, right? No injuries from international duty? Not that I'm aware of, no. In fact, some players have seen... Some players, international break has actually made them not injured anymore, like Sufal. He's been healed. He's been healed. It's a miracle. He's been healed, though. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he just didn't want to play for Moyes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, look, we're done. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, until next week. See you soon, and... Come on, you ones. Come on, you ones. Hit the outro button, now Gary. I've got to find the outro button. This is usually Nick still. that does this. Hold on. Hold on. Where's the oh, outro? Oh, what an amateur. Where's the outro? Bring back Nick. Here we go. Got it. I found it, John. Fucking. Oh,